Hello and good morning. I thought I'd start this a few seconds early while Walter is joining us. Walter, you gonna say Happy April Fool's Day? Yeah, he doesn't know what April Fool's Day or what time is or what dates are or what months are, but he's a good kitty. Um, yeah, Happy April, April Fool's. Hopefully, you're having a fun day. Hopefully, if you are participating in any pranks, that you're not actually hurting anyone, but just having good fun um, from your perspective and their perspective. And that's what I aimed for with Stillmeyer Games this year. Let me get Walter off the table here so he won't keep shaking. You want to say goodbye, Walter? Here, he'll hang out for a minute. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all doing well. I know I normally don't do live casts on Mondays, but I thought I'd send this month's Stillmeyer newsletter on Monday since it's April Fool's, and we do have an April Fool's treat today. Um, and I'll be here on Wednesday as usual as well, but I figured I'd hang out for 20, 30 minutes today and just see how you're doing. If you had a good weekend, talk about some Stillmeyer Games news in the newsletter. And uh, I guess hang out with Walter as long as he wants to hang out here. He's being pretty good right now. So uh, our April Fool's treat this year began yesterday when I posted my favorite video uh, or my, my favorite worm span memes. When we announced worm span back in what, late February or late January, early February, a bunch of people got really creative with other games that could have the span uh, extension after them, uh, including... Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a top 10 video you can check out here. I'll show you on my other screen. Here's the other screen here. Looks like this. You can click it in the newsletter and go over to my top 10 favorite Wormspan memes. I had an honorable mention list of some really clever wordplay, but uh, the, the main video, or the, the meat of the video features images, images that people created to uh, for, for pretend Wormspan boxes or blank span boxes. So I really enjoyed seeing those. Um, yeah, so that was part of it. That was what I did yesterday. And along with that, I announced, including today, I announced our real April Fool's treat of the day, which is our chocolate of the day. And I actually have here, I'll pull these, I can show you on the screen here, but I actually have the real chocolate of the day here. So we worked with a local chocolatier, Crown Candy Kitchen, uh, to make these chocolate bars. And let me pull one out so I can show you because we created custom, did I open up any of these? We created custom chocolate of the day chocolate bars because if you follow these live casts, you probably know that I always have a chocolate of the day. And uh, just, you know, because I love chocolate and I like talking about little indulgences within moderation. Yeah, so here's the chocolate bar right here. It has the same logo that I have on my shirt here, the Stillmeyer Games Cat Ear April Fool's logo, and it says Chocolate of the Day. So it's a pretty hearty, I mean, this isn't, a, you can tell from my hands, this isn't a giant chocolate bar, but they come in either packs of four or eight from this chocolatier. And you can add other things that the chocolatier makes if you want, if you want more chocolate from them. We did work with them yesterday, kind of at the last minute, to arrange flat rate shipping throughout the US. So there's shipping for, essentially $10 anywhere in the US. Um, let me see if I can get the, the focus to come back here. How do we do this? Um, but uh, yeah, so we have flat rate shipping now available, or not we don't, but we do. Uh, Crown Candy Kitchen does, has flat rate shipping back. So I, hopefully the, the, the Zoom will refocus in a minute. But yeah, we have these chocolate bars. It comes in four, four different colored boxes. You'll get a, if you get a pack of four, you'll get one of each color, or you should. And that way, the next time I do a chocolate of the day, you can join the chocolate of the, day, of the day with one of these treats, or you can share them at your game night, or you can have them in the afternoon whenever you want a little bit of chocolate. Yeah, I think they did a really neat job with it. We've been It's something we've been thinking about for years, but we didn't quite know how to do it because we are not a food manufacturer. I don't think we're even licensed to ship food. And so we had to find a way to do it. And we, we found a local chocolatier who was willing to work with us and make that happen. So... If you're interested, check out the newsletter. And if you're if you're in the U.S., now unfortunately, they don't ship internationally, um, which I know many of our, our our followers, our customers are not in the U.S. So I'm sorry about that. But if you are in the U.S., you can go check out Crown Candy Kitchen for the chocolate of the day. It's all milk chocolate, all creamy milk chocolate, and yeah. I don't know, just a fun little treat. So, and this is real, like anything that we do on April Fool's Day. This is not a joke. This is a real thing that you can go get right now if you're interested. Gary says, are there any golden tickets in them for an invitation to tour your factory? 
That would be a fun idea, Garrett. I, I like that. i uh, do a, a golden ticket. Our, our factory is in China. It's in Shenzhen. So it would be quite a trip to go there. But um, Panda has invited me to do a tour of the factory. So maybe maybe someday someone else will get to take a tour of the factory with me at the same time that I experience it myself. Mega Blue says that Crown Candy... Oh, I need to remember to put the comments on the screen. Crown Candy is outstanding. Now, Crown Candy isn't just known for their chocolate, but they're also known for their milkshakes, their food. It's a, it's an old St. Louis establishment. It's been around for a long time, and they just make good food. So, yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it too, Jeff. Corel is enjoying a delicious piece of Belgian chocolate as we speak. That's a great treat of the day. Corel was... Uh, one of the biggest helpers at um, at Essen Spiel this past year, and he sent some of my coworkers home with some delicious Belgian chocolate that I got to enjoy. Of course, I've long since eaten all of that chocolate, but I'm jealous of your Belgian chocolate, Corel. But I do plan on enjo enjoying. I'll open one of these. I, I guess one of them that looks like it did break. Which one broke? The red one broke. Well, you can't really tell. One of them broke a few minutes ago when I tried to open it up. So I'll eat the broken one today as my chocolate of the day. Ray says, is there a chocolatier version of Viticulture coming out when I, for a while, I actually, I know this is a joke question, but I did legitimately because of my love of, of chocolate. I, I, for a while, I considered making a version of Viticulture that, uh, that had a chocolate theme, um, that used similar mechanisms, probably worker placement with, uh, you know, passive income, some form of visitor card. So not a reskin, but a, a familiar version of Viticulture with chocolate. But there have been quite a few chocolate themed games that have come out that have maybe not done extremely well, but they're, I think they're pretty solid games, including um, Chocolate Factory. And so I haven't, I haven't pursued that. Um, but I did consider it for a little while. Chad says that he just watched Wonka, the new movie with Timothy Chalamet, this weekend after hearing some of the music, and it was really great. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Chad. Yeah, we watched it a few weekends ago. As well and and really did enjoy it it's on hbo max right now here in the us keith says am i a fan of dark chocolate i am uh and crown candy gave us the option of making milk or dark chocolate bars i decided to go with milk because my perception is that more people like milk than dark i like both i like a mix of the two but i do i do i do like uh, uh dark chocolate and milk chocolate I, I like both um i like white chocolate in some forms I don't get as excited about milk chocolate or uh, white chocolate as I do milk chocolate and dark chocolate. I think my the ideal percentage for me for chocolate is somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. That's my ideal range. And I tried to get Crown Candy Kitchen to tell me what percentage their milk chocolate was, and they couldn't tell me. So I don't know what it is. I would guess that it's around it's in the 30 to 40 percent range is my is my guess for this milk chocolate. Julia says, could there be a legacy style game where you eat the chocolate as the game progresses? If we could be a chocolate manufacturer, um, I think that would be really neat. I did see a joke. In fact, I'm very curious. Are any of you seeing fun board game related April Fool's jokes or pranks today? And one of them that I did see was uh, was from was about New York Slice, New York Slice Legacy Edition, which is just the idea that you order a giant pizza and you end up dividing it up New York Slice style. It's a really good I cut you choose game, and I can definitely see that working with pizza. So that was a fun little joke that I saw today, but I'm sure there are others happening that I'm not aware of yet. I'm going to look at what else has happened in the newsletter. So the main news, obviously, today is April Fool's Chocolate, Chocolate of the Day and the Wormspan memes. I also talked about how Wormspan had its retail release date on the 29th. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, you can go to your local retailer, your local Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble has done a lot of great advertising for it over the last few days. Um, yeah, they uh, it is available now from retailers worldwide. At least the English version. I think some other languages are also available. We are only in charge of the English version, but yeah, you can get Wormspan from your local retailer right now if you'd like. Also, if you are looking for art prints, there are prints available from from Wingspan and Wormspan. Different artists from Natalia for Wingspan and from Clementine for Wormspan. Mega Blue says, too bad that Crown Candy Kitchen couldn't ship a Stillmeyer classic chocolate shake. That would be very good. That would be an impressive April Fool's achievement if they could ship a chocolate shake. Dominic says, I saw Dragon Shuffle. Dragon Shuffle. Oh, is that like Truffle Shuffle, but with dragons? 
Dame Mon Jay says, we use chocolate eggs when we play wingspan, spend an egg and eat it then. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons that a few years ago we did um, we did little chocolate, uh, brown plastic uh, uh, containers for you to keep your chocolate eggs in to separate them from the real eggs and, wing and wingspan so you don't accidentally eat them. Another real product that we sold on our web store. I think we made too many of those because we still have those on our web store today. Let's see if I can pull up some of those. Um, yeah, here's the full list of April Fool's products. Let's go check that out. There we go. Okay, so yeah, so here's this year's this is the chocolate of the day. This is our April Fool's page on our web store or website. Last year we did the shirt that I'm wearing right now, the April Fool's cat ear t-shirt. And we had some sillier, well, we had some cat themed slash sillier rolling realms, all legitimate promo realms from rolling realms. The year before we did disc golf discs, and we we've continued to work with Innova to make new disc golf discs for each of our games. The uh, I did some videos from past years. Here's 2020. We did the containers for Wingspan or any game, but Wingspan is in particular for keeping candy eggs in the container, separating them from the normal eggs. And we also kind of poked fun at ourselves and some of the small font in the first printing of Between Two Castles of Madigan Ludwig, where we sold a magnifying glass to help you see that text a little bit better. And I think that was, yeah, that was the first year we did a real or real products for April Fool's Day. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm blocking this with a comment. Sorry about that. So yeah, here are the cases, the magnifying glass, the disc golf discs, promo realms, the t-shirt, all the way back up to the chocolate. Monkey, Monkey Butler says, the chocolate fanatics will beat you down with white chocolate not being chocolate. Totally fair. Yeah, absolutely. Because the world is short on the re on real crisis. I actually heard that, that uh, chocolate prices are going up right now due to Actually, I didn't read the article. I just read one of those things where I just read the headlines. I was like, okay, I'm going to keep buying chocolate anyway, but I hope everything's okay. Blake says, you love chocolate and there's a disturbing lack of Willy Wonka board games. Still, my name is Willy Wonka worker placement when? <laughs> I guess that could be tied to the chocolate version of viticulture and Wonka, Wonka culture version of viticulture. Carell says, I'm creating a board game where you must free card slots before you can play cards. My prototype, the unavailable card slots are covered with chocolates and people can eat them when they free them. That's nice. Nice little thematic touch there. I, I bet you get plenty of plenty of play testers to sign up for that game, Corral. Julia is also mentioning the uh, the, the chocolate Stomeyer Games containers that I showed you a second ago. Oh, Julio says, uh, I beat you to it. Yeah. And Dominic clarifies, yeah, the Dragon Shuffle is a new version of Forest Shuffle. Julie says, I saw in the Wingspan group, I saw fictional fictional frog mouth cards from around the world for April Fool's Day. Were those created by Travis? Travis loves his, uh, his frog mouth birds. I wonder if we'll get more of them in future Wingspan expansions. I don't know if there are frog mouths in Antarctica, Africa, and South America. Travis would know that. Yeah, did you all play any fun games this weekend? I played, okay, tra Julie clarifies it was by Travis. I um, actually had a fun non-gaming experience, a couple of fun non-gaming experiences this past weekend where we had cookbook club on Saturday. That's when we all pick a cookbook or yeah, together we choose one cookbook and we each choose a recipe or recipes from that cookbook. Uh, this time we chose a Star Wars themed cookbook and I made some um, roasted cauliflower and I made a sherbet cocktail. I made a non-alcoholic version and an alcoholic version of this sherbet cocktail. There was a lot of good food at the table. Surprisingly good for a Star Wars themed cookbook. Um, and I also, on Saturday morning, I went to a farm, a farm called Grand Army Farm, which is not military associated. It just happens to be the name of the road that the farm is located on. They were one of my favorite stands at the Tower Grove Farmer's Market, where I go every week if I can uh, to get their eggs, primarily their eggs. They do have meat as well, but I don't eat the meat that they make. Uh, but they have eggs and really, really good Vietnamese coffee. And they had an open farm day where you go and hang out with all these cute baby animals at their farm. They have so many animals at their farm, including Angora uh, rabbits, baby lambs, baby sheep, baby chickens, baby quail, um, some big dogs, some big sheep. I, I don't have photos to share with you right now, but, um, but I'll, I'll post them um, on Instagram soon. 
because we had a wonderful time. And it, it was a good reminder to me that I want to, if I can, I'd like to more often go to the places where my food comes from. Uh, there's so much separation between me and my food. And I'm fortunate, at least with the local farmers markets, that I can go to those farms when they host open houses like this to uh, to see to see where the food comes from and how they make it. Not to judge it, but just to, you know, make that connection between how food is made and and and, and you know, how it gets from from farm to table, essentially. So that was a really neat experience. I had a good time doing it. Megan had a good time. We invited some friends and their kids to go have fun. Uh, with baby animals and it was really cute seeing Megan hold all these tiny baby birds, which she enjoys doing. Mark says the chocolate bars look scrumptious. Hopefully it is still available when I visit the U.S. in the distant future. Hopefully they are, Mark. And if not, well, I know these chocolate bars will only be available for a few days this week, but uh, Crown Candy has been here for a long time and I'm sure they'll be here for a long time. It's a fun place to visit if you come to St. Louis. Talking about games played this weekend, the Duke of Fall mentioned Animal Upon Animal good game that is fun for kids and adults. Garrett says his whole family got together yesterday at the house to cook up a giant brunch, chaotic, but a blast. That's great. Hopefully people had some fun with some big meals this weekend, like the, the cookbook club that I went to. Julio played Teotihuacan. Reminded me of Apiary. Yeah, I've compared that game to Apiary in terms of um, a little bit of the, like the leveling up of the workers as you play. It has a similar, it's, Executed differently, but has a similar feeling when you're playing the game. Yvonne has uh, Darwin's Journey to set up and close to play for the first time. A lot to, to digest. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot going on in that game. Um, I've only played it once so far, and I had a lot of fun upgrading my workers in the game. Mega Blue is playing some Tapestry for the first time. Oh, welcome to Tapestry then. Ian, thanks for teaching Jeff how to play. Julie says uh, we, uh, her son likes outer space, so she played his, her son's new game, Galaxy Trucker. He loves building the spaceship and seeing what chaos comes afterwards. It's been a long time I, I, since I played, last played by, uh, Galaxy Trucker, but I can see that being a lot of fun, especially for kids. But adults, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun game all around. I mentioned going to a farm day. James says that he did stuff like similar a few weeks ago. He went to Catskill animal sanctuary just north of new york city they rescue sick and abandoned farm animals that's wonderful to go to kind of a rescue ranch um yeah that's really really great i ours was i, I would say not, not a traditional farm but it they, they weren't rescuing animals they're um breeding some animals and not breeding others but yeah that's great that you get to go see that james that's really neat the games that i played i didn't play did i play any games over the weekend i didn't play any games over the weekend but last week I did play Stone Spire Architects, the new game from uh, Thunderworks Games. Really enjoyed that. You're building, it's a little bit like the original Boss Monster, but uh, with no take that. It's a drafting game where you're building a dungeon. Um, I played Eleven Z's, the Guilty Party game, a little bit of a, a hidden interaction style game. Played Leaf, a really clever tile placement game where the tiles are look like leaves. They aren't, they aren't a traditional like hex shape or, or square shape for, for tiles. They're, they're leaves falling on the forest floor. Thank you to Susanna for teaching that. And we played Red Rising. I haven't played Red Rising in a while, but uh, it was a good reminder to me of how much I really do like Red Rising. I know I'm the co-designer of it, but you know I make the games that I love and I, I really enjoy playing it. So we played Red Rising last week. I got to mention that on Instagram as well. Oh, let's say I skipped over a few things. I'll come back. Garrett says he's been playing a lot of Super Mega Lucky Box on Board Game Arena. Never played it before this last week, but it's a great async game to play. You know, I don't think I realized it was on Board Game Arena, but I need to play it there because I really enjoyed my, my in-person play with that. With uh, Susanna, actually, was when I played that. And Susanna says that she got to play Wormspan with her husband, Joe, and her cat uh, <laughs> this past weekend. That's great, Susanna. Ian says, getting closer to beating Wormspan all time on level three. So close there, Ian, 92 to 93. You'll get it. Let us know when you get it. And Dominic played Dune Imperium for the first time. He says, it was a good learning game, and I learned to go for the thir third worker instead of the council first. This leads me to a little question here, Dominic, or a few of you are mentioning that you're learning games. And I'm working on a game right now where I'm debating whether or not to put a tutorial in it. Like, I'm writing the rule book right now, and I... Part of me wants to put a tutorial in it. Part of me doesn't know if it needs it because the rule set is 
is pretty streamlined what you actually need to know to play. Like what I, I'm realizing that what I would put in the tutorial is essentially what I would put in the rule book. Um, so I'm debating it. So I'm curious if you've had any, when, when, when do you look for a tutorial in a game? When do, when do you really hope that a tutorial is there? Is it when there's a really long, complicated rule book where you don't need to know all the rules up front, but you'd like to start play, taking turns? Um, yeah, when do you when do you appreciate that tabletop games have tutorials? Well, Joshua went all in for the chocolates. He says there are so many chocolates I wanted to try that I ended up spending a hundred dollars at Crown Candy Kitchen. And yeah, that is true. Yeah, in addition to getting, I'll show you over here. In addition to getting the Stomar Games Chocolate of the Day bar, there's lots of other delicious chocolates that uh, that have many more varied flavors and and things that you can get from Crown Candy Kitchen. And I, I do want to make clear that. You're not benefiting Stonemaier Games and buying the chocolate, which is totally fine. There are many other companies that I think are worth supporting, including local long-standing businesses like Crown Candy Kitchen. Um, but and, and we, but I just want to let you know that, j just so it's clear uh, that uh, that it is completely separate from Stonemaier Games. We also intentionally didn't take any royalties or cut of any profits from the chocolate bars that they're selling just because we wanted to keep the price as low as possible for you. So, but have fun with it. Enjoy the chocolate. It really is delicious chocolate. And Joshua, I'm glad you found some chocolate that you're excited about there. Ray taught his eight-year-old cousin how to play cribbage yesterday and she beat her him in her very first game. That's awesome. That's really cool that she picked it up so fast, Ray. That's great. Uh, Mega Blue says, introduced, that's not a hat to his extended family yesterday. I had a great time. That is a great family game. I, I might need to pick that up for my family reunion this summer so I could see them really enjoying that game. Hey, Tim is popping in to say hi. I don't normally get to see Tim here. Long time no see, Tim. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you here on Monday. I know I'm not usually here on Monday either, so maybe some people who normally can't attend are popping in to say hi. Joshua's played or, or picked up, not played, Frosthaven, Sleeping Gods, Distant Skies, and the latest Arnak expansion from PAX East last weekend. And Inventions, Evolution of Ideas also arrived this weekend. Nice. Big weekend of, of receiving games there. Susanna says, Red Rising was super enjoyable, and I thought it was neat how close the scores were. That we, yeah, we had some very close scores. I think three of us were separated by eight points, maybe. Very, very close game with very different strategies as well. Yeah. Great to play with you, Susanna. Um, Romaine says, I saw on the update that the Expeditions expansion was on freight shipping. Can you provide us when the pre-order will be? I, I can't say that yet, not because I'm withholding information, but because I don't know yet. A lot can still happen during the freight shipping process. Um, but freight shipping usually means we're kind of within a three-month range of when the pre-order will happen, usually. A lot of other factors can change that, but that is typically what happens with uh, when we when we get that. Mark also has a question about things that are upcoming. Um, are we getting new promo realms soon? Uh, I haven't announced, I have not announced the next time that we'll have promo realms, but as you know, Mark, I usually announce them a few weeks in advance on a live stream. And so um, you'll know, you'll know in advance when, when I have new promo realms coming out in the near future. I look forward to revealing the next batch. Trishul says, love playing Viticulture on Borgie Marina after many years, and I'm looking forward to trying the special workers module from Tuscany soon with a physical copy. Did I hear that a new chocolate retheme is coming? Uh, no, there's no chocolate retheme of Viticulture. It's just, I, I was re referencing earlier, someone made a joke about a chocolate themed Viticulture, and I said that there was a time when I was thinking about it, but I have not pursued that idea. So about tutorials, Boro says, tutorial only if rules are very complicated. I, and he, they go on to say that for, for games like the ones that Stonewire makes, usually tutorials are not needed. Ian says that he likes tutorials well on every game. Anything that will help me get the game started, I'm good with. I can, Yeah, I can see both sides of this. Complicated, but also anything to get the game to the table, I think it can be, can be very helpful. James says, I like a tutorial when there are different actions you can select on a turn, and some of the actions are easier to explain by walking a player through them. This is kind of what we do in the Wingspan Swift Start Guide. Gary says, I think it depends on the style of game. If it's super complicated, a tutorial might be helpful, but if the rules are very streamlined, it may not be necessary. Also, also if the game is very unique, doing some, uh, some non-traditional things, a tutorial explaining how to interact with the game systems effectively can be helpful. I like that. I like that, Garrett. 
Julie says, I look for a tutorial when it's a complex game or when you have a lot of choices. My preference is for diced tutorials because the animation along with the rules is very helpful. And yeah, actually that's impacting me a little bit too, Julie. Do I invest my time in making a tutorial or do I invest in diced to make the tutorial for us? Um, I can see you know, both are, are pretty viable options these days because Dice does, does a good job at that. Ray says, most of the people I play with like to learn while playing. I'm definitely that type of player. Um, so a kind of guided play experience tutorial like Wingspan has been super valuable for those sorts of teachers. So basically any game more complex than say Sushi Go, I have a tutorial for the teach. And that is actually, that's a good point, Ray. So there's tutorials that teach you how to play for the first time, but there's also tutorials that help you teach the game to other players after you know how to play. Um, sometimes they have overlap and how they're used. And sometimes they, they're, you almost have to design one or the other or one and the other, but that's a great point. Good, good way to think about that. Tim says that he's really been enjoying Dune Imperium. He's currently reading the books as well. He's looking forward to Geekway to the West next month. Yeah, we're in April now. So next month is May. Geekway is coming up in just a month and a half now. Tim is going to be there all four days this year. That's awesome, Tim. I hope we get the chance to play a game. I really enjoyed playing Mosaic with you last year, and hopefully we can have a fun game together this year as well. Uh, I have not put together my list of games that I really want to play at Geekway for the first time yet, but I've been crafting that list over time. Tim, uh, Dominic, who inspired this question a little bit, says, I think I would have liked a learn to play or tips for doing Imperium. It's due to me approaching the game more as a deck builder instead of worker placement i appreciate multiple ways to learn that's a good point too yeah it um while it does take more of an investment to create and print a tutorial giving players that option can be pretty good you know it, it, people learn in different ways i like the way you said that dominic uh julio says when i watch a tutorial then read the rules then i watch the video again it helps iron out things that confuse me upon the first watch and yeah, there's another kind of piggybacking off what Dominic, Dominic said about um, different ways to learn. I often do that too. I don't, I, you know, I mix up the order of when I watch the video and read the rules. I think usually I watch the video first and then I sit down to read the rules. Um, the video kind of gives me a visual context for the game and then, um, then I use the rule book. Duke of Falls says, I prefer example turns over tutorials, but I understand the need for them. That's a great point too. Instead of making a tutorial, I can just have a really robust um, sample turn or a few different really robust sample turns to explain what a turn looks like. I think that can be really helpful. Um, yeah. Dune says, uh, Dominic repeats that about Dune. What else is going on? I think I've covered all the all the things. This was intended to be just a short little live cast today. I see Alan and George popping in to say hi as well. I'll do the full live cast this week as normal on on Wednesday. But yeah, I just wanted to to show you what we were doing for April Fools, including the chocolate of the day for U.S. shipping, U.S. flat rate shipping of ten dollars from Crown Candy Kitchen here in St. Louis, a longstanding uh, chocolate and milkshake and lunch company. They, they make a lot of good food. For us, they're making. Uh, chocolate of the day. They also have a lot of other delicious chocolate treats that you can get on their web store if you're interested. Some of you might be chocolated out after Easter, but uh, there's always room for more chocolate in my life, at least. So yeah, I have I have my chocolate of the day bars right here. And then if you are new to our April Fool's traditions at Stonemaier Games, you can check out our web store and see like we still have some cat ear t-shirts, which is the shirt that I'm wearing right now. We have those. We have Rolling Realms from last year. We have uh, disc off disc from 2022 we have uh the the candy egg cases i think those are still left on some of the web stores i think we're out of the magnifying glasses on most web stores though but yeah i hope you all have a wonderful april fools let me see if there are any other comments before i wrap up this short live cast oh hilda says over the last month or so we taught our copy of Wormstand to five different groups of friends and everyone has really loved the suggested first turn card super helpful and able to start playing really quickly I really like that, Hilda. Yeah, I think it can be really helpful in a game that gives you a lot of options um, to give you those little nudges, and you don't have to follow them. And in, in the Wingspan Smith Start Guide, you it there you have to follow the actions basically. But in Wormspan, we gave players a little bit more leniency, and we said, you know, here's some ideas, some things to think about on your first few turns. I like that approach too. Chad says, "What was the conversation like asking the chocolatiers to join forces? Must have been an odd request for them." A 
little bit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, but I think they were up for doing it because this is a company that does make custom chocolate bars for, I think, often like corporate events. And so making a custom chocolate bar wasn't new to them. They just needed the the mold from us to uh, to actually make the chocolate. So they were, it wasn't all that odd for them, just surprisingly. It would be just a little bit. All right, I'm going to take a break for, for now and, and uh, do some other things, take a lunch break, and also have some chocolate of the day, of course. But I hope you have a wonderful April Fool's. And thank you for, for joining me today for this short little live cast. Again, I'll be back on Wednesday for the full live cast. And of course, you can check out the full e-newsletter. I didn't go through the full e-newsletter here, but there's other stuff in the new. Oh, I did, I, I'm not on the e-newsletter anymore. Here's the newsletter. You check out the full newsletter over here, Beyond the Chocolate of the Day. I've talked about a few different updates. The, um, the, the progress chart over here and all the regular stuff that I put in the newsletter. That's all there. If you want to check it out, to click on some of those links, whatever you are up for today. Have a great day, great Monday, and I will see you on Wednesday. Take care.